Today I'm going to extract pure elemental iron from supplemental iron vitamins. And this is something I'd never normally try to do because of the difficulty involved, but as a patron request, I promised I'd do my best. On that note, to get started, I went ahead and powdered the pills in a blender. This bottle contains 365 pills that allegedly contain 325 milligrams of ferrous sulfate, equating to 65 milligrams of pure iron. This is 118.625 grams of ferrous sulfate, or 23.725 grams of pure iron total, or 0.427 moles. Once the pills were finally ground, I then thoroughly mixed them with a few hundred milliliters of distilled water that I'd balanced down to a pH of 1 in order to dissolve as much iron sulfate as possible. This was then passed through a coffee filter to try and remove the filler materials from the pill, which from what I can tell is mostly cellulose and calcium phosphate. The resulting filtrate was a cool green color, which is typical of iron sulfate, but there was still a good deal of dissolved calcium here. To remove as much as I could, I brought the pH back up to 3 with a bit of sodium hydroxide and boiled off some of the excess water. This precipitated some calcium salt, but honestly I'm not really sure if it was sulfate or more phosphate. Regardless, I got rid of it by another filtration leaving me with a nice, clear, and mostly pure solution of ferrous sulfate. Now, to get to iron metal from here is not the easiest thing in the world, as iron is a fairly reducing metal. This is why the Iron Age is closer to today than it was to the Bronze Age, as making iron compounds into iron metal requires powerfully reducing conditions. Historically, this was done by heating iron ore or oxide with coke or another source of carbon. In this process, the iron is reduced to its metallic form by the carbon, while the carbon is oxidized to carbon dioxide, which floats away. Needless to say, the importance of this chemical process cannot be understated but I really didn't feel like recreating it myself. To that end, I first considered precipitation with aluminum, but I've done that before and it's never very efficient due to the iron redissolving in the acidic solution. I then considered electrolysis, but abandoned the idea for the same reason. In the end, I settled on the thermal decomposition of iron oxalate, which was needlessly complex, but a very interesting process. To do this, I first made a solution of oxalic acid by dissolving 40 grams of oxalic acid in a minimal volume of hot distilled water. I then added the solution to my iron sulfate extract, which suddenly turned the solution a dark red-orange, which quickly changed to yellow as insoluble ferrous oxalate precipitated. This reaction was so unexpectedly beautiful that it feels like a crime to let it play at 20 times speed, so I'm gonna let it play out. This quickly began to settle out of solution, and to collect it, I simply passed my solution through vacuum filtration. The resulting iron oxalate had a non-Newtonian consistency nearly identical to cornstarch mixed with water, which was interesting considering I didn't expect the wet iron oxalate to behave this way. In any case, this was allowed to dry completely over the course of several days before I began the miserable task of powdering the rock-solid chunk that had formed. This took a while, but in the end I was left with 59.34 grams of ferrous oxalate, which represents 0.41 moles and a 96.6% recovery from my supplement pills. Even though this was heated under vacuum for several hours, I am skeptical of this yield, so assume there's a bit of hydrated ferrous oxalate remaining. Now, to convert the iron oxalate to iron, I simply needed to strongly heat it. The only problem with this is that the iron formed this way is referred to as pyrophoric. This means that the iron that results from this reaction will aggressively react with any oxygen present to form iron oxide. And to prevent this, my idea was to heat the iron oxalate in a test tube. Ideally, the carbon dioxide produced by this reaction would displace any oxygen present in the tube, giving me just enough time to turn the tube into an ampule, sealing out any oxygen and saving my pure and highly reactive iron. However, it turned out that this tube was way too large to easily turn into an ampule, and once it began to crack, I decided to simply crimp the top once the reaction was complete in order to give the iron enough time to at least appear on camera. As you can see here, once the iron oxalate had decomposed, I was left with a decent quantity of black pyrophoric iron. It was strongly magnetic and easily held several neodymium magnets at a time. 
I had a bit of fun moving the iron powder around in the tube using these magnets, which revealed that there was actually a decent quantity of iron oxalate at the center of the mass that hadn't actually decomposed. As a side note, pyrophoric iron reacts so strongly with oxygen in the air that if it's poured out of the tube it will glow orange as it rapidly decomposes to ferric oxide. Here's a bit of footage of what that looks like, and I do intend to do a full video on pyrophoric iron in the future, so keep a lookout for that if you're interested. Now, while this method was technically successful, I don't think it was the vision behind the video request, so I decided to take this a step further. To that end, I added this bit of ferric oxide to the rest of the ferrous oxalate and baked it all in an oven at 250 degrees Celsius for a couple hours. This decomposed the entire mass of ferrous oxalate to red ferric oxide, which I weighed for a mass of 27.33 grams, or 0.171 moles, assuming this is all iron-3 oxide. However, this would represent an 83.4% recovery from the iron oxalate, which is lower than my percent yield of iron oxalate. This reaction should proceed at a 100% recovery, so considering it's lower now, 83.4% was likely my recovery of iron oxalate earlier, and there was certainly a bit of water left bound to my iron oxalate. Either way, I had a fun time messing around with this ultra-fine powder because you're never too old for magnets. And when I got bored of that, I decided it was time to begin the final phase of the reaction. For this final step, I decided to just make thermite, which was invented as a way to purify iron anyway. To do this, I just assumed all my iron powder was ferric oxide and mixed it thoroughly with 9.24 grams of aluminum powder. The idea here is similar to the coal coke reduction of iron oxide to metallic iron, but since aluminum is a far stronger reducing agent than carbon, this reaction is dramatically more thermodynamically favorable. Specifically, unlike reduction with carbon, this reaction can more than sustain itself once it's started. Even saying it this way feels like a bit of an understatement, as once this reaction begins, it'll burn at over 2,500 degrees Celsius and give off an enormous amount of energy in an extremely short period of time. If you bother to run the calculations, you'll find that this small amount of thermite will release 145.35 kilojoules of energy in just a few seconds. An F1 grenade releases 276 kilojoules of energy, for reference. That said, this reaction can be very dangerous, and before even starting it, I cleared my fume hood and everything around it of any flammables and suspended my little crucible of thermite over a sand bath before covering most of the opening with a graphite plate. I then initiated the reaction using a strip of magnesium as a fuse, and this was by far the fastest thermite reaction I've ever seen, which was likely due to the extremely fine particle size of the iron oxide. Once this was allowed to cool for a while, I got to work separating my pure iron from the ceramic dish, which was easy because it crumbled to dust after exposure to such incredible heat. In the end, I got a final mass of 21.68 grams, which would represent a 91% recovery from my iron supplement pills. Obviously, this is impossible given my 83.4% yield earlier, and the extra mass is likely aluminum oxide and bits of ceramic that fuse to the metal. Regardless, this is about as pure as it's going to get, and in the end, I consider this project a success for being the most scientifically impractical way possible to obtain iron. In all honesty though, it was a lot of fun to sort of trial and error my way to pure iron from supplement pills, and I do like the way iron produced using thermite looks. In any case, that's all I have for today. I hope you found this video interesting, and as always, I want to thank all my incredible patrons for their generous contributions. Your support is vital and very appreciated. To everyone else, if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, or even by becoming a patron yourself. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.